Have you stopped dreaming? Today we're talking about peeling back the layers in order to become our authentic selves. Melissa shares tips on how to overcome shame and ways to be our true selves. Melissa says we can find a sense of connection when we learn to let people see behind our curtains. So please stick around and enjoy the show. And welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because I have most, Mo- oh my goodness, I have Miss Melissa <laughs> Rusiano on the line today, and, and I am Hello. so sorry I couldn't get my lips <laughs> That's to work. Okay. <laughs> so without further ado, I'd like to bring on Miss Melissa. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All that practice on my name, and look, it's the first That's- name that catches you, not the last. I know, I couldn't get the miss part, miss and Melissa, right? Really? (laughs) So we're going to actually talk about peeling back layers and not selling. But before we really get into that conversation, Uh I would love to introduce a little bit more about who you are and how you're dealing with this whole COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And um, I am a licensed clinical social worker and I live in Erie, Pennsylvania. And much to the blizzard country um, name that I like to throw on my location, it is snowing today just for, you know, effect. Um, But uh, I've been here for about 22 years. I've lived in larger cities. And so it's interesting over the last seven months just to kind of see how my friends in larger cities are being impacted by this versus the the smaller location that I live in a little bit more rural um, but also the impact it has on my clients you know being in private practice and just you know being remote and and just not having that contact with folks you know I think it's been a struggle um, I think it's been a real struggle for a lot of folks and you know, for me, I'm blessed that, you know, I'm able to have that support system, um, but it it does have an impact, I think, on all of our moods. So, yeah, it's been challenging. And now yeah. here we go again, round two, round I- three, whatever we're on, um, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> it's just, especially going into the holidays, I think it's a struggle for everybody. Right, right. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I think about like, because my, my family, I have a son out in California and mm-hmm. my, my girls are here which is cool you know the girls are mm-hmm, here but mm-hmm. my son you know I miss mm-hmm. him as, as well so yeah but you know what helps and I, I shared a little bit is um I'm military you know mm-hmm, so we, mm-hmm. we've been away right. for the holidays yeah. and stuff like that so what we've learned and this is one tip tidbit I love for people to to even if they hear it, it's just like there's so many people who can use your love and affection right where you are. Exactly. So, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, it, it sucks that your family's not there, but mm-hmm. there are some people who can use what you have for now. So right. we used to right. make family where, where we were. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I also think as I actually have plane tickets to California next week that I think I'm going to give back, um, you know, it's, it's holidays sometimes don't even have to be on that day as well. That sometimes your holidays can be, I mean, Thanksgiving can be in July. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about being grateful and, and getting your people together and just being able to celebrate. Um And so just to be able to cognizant that, yes, it's Thanksgiving, it's the third Thursday of of November, but that doesn't mean you can't create your own holidays with your people when when you're able. Right. And, you know, Melissa, this is a great segue into, like, the topic of what we're talking Mm -hmm. about. It's like Mm -hmm. peeling back the layers and not settling. So let's dive a little bit more into what Mm -hmm. does that mean for you? Well, I think that as um, as a female, as a mental health clinician, I think there's always this um, expectation that you have to have it put together. You have to be able to multitask. You have to be able to handle any curveballs that are thrown. And the more women I work with and the more mental health or even helping professionals that I work with, you know, really get to a point of saying like, hey, this facade I put out to the rest of the world, like, 
it doesn't jive when I get home, you know, and I throw on my fuzzy slippers and I curl up in a blanket on the couch. And it's just a very difficult transition, I think, for a lot of people. And as a result, they end up settling in careers that they think they quote unquote should have, or they settle in relationships because it's better than being alone. And just really, um, I really want to empower women, especially, but men as well. I don't want to exclude any gender here, but to to not settle for something just because it's in front of you. You know, sometimes the harder road is going to give you way more fulfillment than taking the easy path and just being like, huh, well, that's what's here. Right, right. And I know you talk about, let's, because you, you're, you actually are behind the scenes of helping professionals. Correct. Mm-hmm. Do their work. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how does that look like from, I mean, your perspective, because I know, you know, they always, like you said, they always feel like they have to have it all together Yeah. So you, oh you my gosh, yeah. from behind. So, I mean, this goes across the board, so it doesn't necessarily have to be just for the professionals. Right. Like, Absolutely. It's for anybody. Yeah. So how do you learn to like peel back, as we say, peel back those layers? Those layers. Yeah. And I, I think when there's anybody who's had this image, You know, whether you're a professional or stay at home mom, it doesn't matter. We all have this image we present. And, you know, when you're, when you take that step back and say, oh gosh, you know, maybe this isn't something that is great for me right now. Maybe I should talk to something, something, somebody just, there's a piece missing. Um, And to be able to really connect with that person and to have a conversation, but to also encourage people. And I do it, um, I always tell my friends I'm quirky and they're like, that's not a professional word to use. And I was like, but that's who I am. I'm quirky, but I'm authentic and I'm hundred percent me. And with that comes sharing part of my experiences in just failing at things or, you know, being divorced and, you know, but still encouraging women to work on their marriages and knowing that it's okay to be human and that they're, there's a space to be created to say, okay, this is where you get to be vulnerable. This is where you get to be you. And then as you get more comfortable with that and realize that you're not the only person in the world that's ever dealt with that, then you can start taking it outside of that safe space and starting to bring your people into that world. Um, trusted people, of course. It's not like I take out billboards or I encourage people to take out billboards with like your deepest, darkest secret. Um, But I think we're just as a society carrying way too much shame. And, And because of that, we just put on the facade, we settle for what we think is okay, because we're fearful if we go for what we really, really want. If somebody sees behind that facade, they're gonna realize, hey, they don't really deserve that, whatever that is. And that right. could be different for absolutely everybody. All right. And, and this is associated. I know those who are familiar with it probably hear a little bit about Brene Brown's mm-hmm. um, uh, philosophy in there. But actually, right. you t- talked a, a little bit about um, pulling back the layers and the authenticity and the vulnerability mm-hmm. side. It's yeah. like you don't tell your story to everybody, correct? No, Mm-mm. no, not at all. <laughs> and, nope. but you, but what I'm also saying is like you said you use the word quirky some people might associate that as a negative term but uh-huh. you, you, yeah. you've learned to accept that so oh, how, absolutely how do you teach people <laughs> to learn to accept where they are and who they are yeah, it's it's kind of like that you know if you remember middle school when you have like this um you're afraid to trip down the hallway when you're in middle school because everyone's going to stare at you and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you see what she did? She looked like a whatever. And, you know, it's as an adult, I think we've just been conditioned to don't make a mistake, you know, don't trip over a word, um, don't get divorced, don't have a kid who, you know, makes poor decisions, um, don't fail at your job like don't and and and, I mean that list is endless of all these don'ts that we have and the more don'ts that are there I think the more we try to cover it up with this perfect image and just being able to forgive yourself and accept those decisions and most importantly figure out what the teachable moments are Mm. you know what are those teachable moments because um 
I attended a conference, um, virtual conference, of course, my first virtual conference ever a couple weeks ago. And one of the speakers who just absolutely floored me talked about the word fail being an acronym for first attempt in learning. And it just totally struck me as, oh my gosh, why do we look at failure as such a negative aspect instead of failure is figuring out what didn't work and then looking to make it better at that next round, you know, and, and there's that, I think it's Albert Einstein. There's a reason I'm a therapist and not a scientist, um, you know, that said, I found a thousand and one ways not to make electricity or, or whatever that was. Um, and so, but it's like, we joke about that, but yet we don't absorb that and say, it's okay to be honest about who you are. It's, it's right. okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. And you find such a sense of community and connection, especially now when everything's virtual, find such a sense of community and connection. If you can just let somebody behind the curtain and right. to see, I think COVID has made it easier for people to isolate, you know, easier yeah. for people to have Mickey Mouse pajama pants on. Um, which today I retired so we could chat um, <laughs> like Mickey Mouse pajama pants on and maybe they they have dry shampoo for the last five days but they can look fine from like the waist up for a meeting and and I think it's really done a disservice to encourage right. that hide a little bit more hide a little bit more don't show the world what's really going on right. and I think nice. that's a disservice Right. And I, and then this is the part where I always like to say, well, this is dropping a lot of nuggets down there. And if you're picking them up, if you're picking them up, like I am, remember, give us a thumbs up, put a comment down below so we can follow up with her and go deeper into this conversation. So I like how you talked about um, fail, failure as fail attempt at learning. Mm-hmm. And forgive me if I didn't get that wrong, because I, I, I can't get that right. So, <laughs> but like, it's a, what I'm learning and what I'm also reading is the help us um, like say that we're all human, find the commonalities in, yes. in what yes. we're doing. So mm-hmm. yeah. we're all, you know, and I think, like you said, we touched about, we're all in this together. All in this together. We may and, be isolated, but we're, right. in, we're still together. Absolutely. And there's that common humanity that, you know, we all have a sense of fear and frustration no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you're, we all have a sense of fear and frustration. We all have a sense of isolation. We all want life that was normal. And for me, um, that was like March 16th, 2020. And I remember it vividly because I, I live in Erie, Pennsylvania, that thinks St. Patrick's Day is like the only holiday everybody should celebrate, which I just find comical. (laughs) And so I found it very ironic that our town shut down on the biggest holiday of the year and we closed, everything shut down on March 17th. And so to me, it was a very easy, you know, date remembrance. And I know a lot of people just want life back. In our case, from March 16th, you know, I want that life back. And I can't have it. Um, And so I think there's all these emotions that we're all feeling. And to be able to say that common humanity doesn't exist, I think does a disservice for everybody living an individual story. But the themes, there's so much unity in that themes. If people would be willing, even if they don't want to totally peel back the layer, just to show a sliver to somebody. Right, right. Because it just, it realizes like, that's that we're all in this together. That, you know, mm-hmm. like I said, I think that's the biggest thing is like we all can feel vulnerable, we all right. feel isolated, but we don't yes. have to be isolated. No, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a, a great point that you know I want to make sure we emphasize and stuff like that. So talk about a little bit more about the shame and the uh, how do how do we get past our shameful stories that we don't want to hide? I mean, you don't have to reveal it all, but how do we? move past and start to accept some of it yeah and and shame is saying I am bad there's something wrong with me for a choice I made or something that was done to me and so I think first and foremost is realizing um, that we all make the best decisions that we can given the information we have at the time we need to make the decision and to almost give yourself a little bit of grace to say hey I did the best I could And if something was done to you to be able to say there was nothing I could have done to prevent that. 
you know, and, and I'm sure some of your listeners, because I can speak for some of my clients, come back with, but what if I can pinpoint exactly what I did wrong? And so then it's like, okay, let's talk about that. You know, what did you learn from that experience? What did you learn from that moment? How did you grow because of it? And are you willing to continue to live behind the shield of shame that is then going to impact every other decision you make? Right. Um, and, and that's the challenging point is the longer we hold on to shame, the more it impacts our identity, the more it impacts choices we make in the future, the more it impacts what, what dreams we go to. Like, are you going to dream big or are you going to settle for, eh, because, you know, I don't want to set myself up to be disappointed again. Right. And I like, you know, what it was on the tip of my tongue and I try not to write too many notes because I'm like trying to take it out. When I, <laughs> but when I don't write notes, I'm like, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but uh, what I'm hearing is a lot of this, it comes down to the kind of questions that you're asking of yourself. So we start yeah. uh, asking ourselves better yes. questions so we can get better yes. answers. So we can get Absolutely. Better. Yes. And sometimes you need an outside person, whether that's a therapist, whether that's a pastor, whether that's your best friend, whether that's... Um, a confidant, a mentor, a coach, you know, it, it therapy is very, very helpful to help people to get underneath those layers to get to the core because there's a core belief there that can be changed. Uh, but it's just about being able to have that conversation with somebody who's going to push back in a very compassionate way and kind of challenge some of those thoughts and really encourage you to not just say, because I did, because I'm bad, because I screwed up because I failed just to be able to say, okay, but what did you learn? How did you grow? Where's the silver lining? Right. right. Always a silver lining. Sometimes we just got to dig a little deeper to find it. <laughs> right. I love mm -hmm. that. So we're getting close to our time on the 20 minutes. It's amazing how fast I know <laughs> time I know, flies. <laughs> I know, right. When you're having fun. So my question really wants to come down to is what's the one thing you want to leave the audience with? Well, I absolutely um, want your listeners to know that there, there is, there is hope and there is another side and, you know, it's taking that first step, you know, to let go of the shame that's holding you back to redefine your identity, to actually follow your dreams, no matter what age you're at, is that there's always hope. Right. right. And to hold on to that is, is key because then it's it's just putting those those pieces into place right and i, I like how you say you just trust the process because trust people the will process come, dude, yeah people will come absolutely <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so miss melissa where can people find more information about you your services and what you offer uh, well, they can just go to my website, um, which I'm, I'm hoping you put in my, the notes. So I'm not spelling my name forever, but it's melissarustiano.com. So, um, and through I there, they to, could, excuse me for a moment. Uh, we have some people on the podcast, so you're going to have to spell it out just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I'll spell it. It's Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, Russiano, which is Russian with an O at the end. So it's R-U-S-S-I-A-N-O.com. So MelissaRussiano.com. And there, there's a contact me form. I have a complimentary consultation that somebody can get on a 20 minute phone call with me, kind of give me a, just a helicopter version about what's going on and see if we're a good fit. Um, I'm pretty non-traditional. Um, it's one thing I always tell my clients, I will never ask you. And how does that make you feel? Because if somebody asked me that, I would be like, how do you think it makes me feel? I'm talking to you. So um, I just really want to empower people to live the best versions of themselves. And I, I know it's I possible. Well, I've enjoyed this conversation and I, I would love to have you come back as, and we can go deeper into the conversation because like I said, you, for those who don't know, she is Bre Brene Brown is certified for those. I know they're a fan like me. <laughs> so when she was talking about shame, she knows how to dive into that. So mm -hmm. we'd love to have her come back if you'd love to come back. I would time. love to come back and chat longer with you. But like I said, this is an intro. So I want to be yep. fair for everybody's time. And I want to <laughs> also say thank you for those who watched Feedback is always welcome. Emails if you have any guests or show ideas. Links to all of Melissa's sites that she mentioned will be posted in there. So yes, please check out those gems, even though she spelled it out. 
follow down there below. And thank you again for watching. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And also, if you're enjoying the insights and you want more of the insights, please consider hitting that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right, bye-bye. Bye, guys. Hi, everyone. This is Tanya again, popping in to say thank you for listening to today's show. Coffee with Tea interviews are always free. And if you're enjoying the wisdom and insights that are being shared, please stay and grow with us and show your financial support. You can buy us coffee or become a monthly supporter. Links are posted in the description box. And again, I wanted to personally say thank you for tuning in.